my name is Steven Crane, and this is the fourth level in my Fight the Dragon uh, episodic campaign, uh, being the first campaign, uh, but the fourth level in that campaign. So, as you can see, um, if you've watched the previous video, uh, we have the end of um, the previous level, which was Orc uh, Den Caverns. Um, and then this is where we pick up uh, on this level. Uh, this level uh, is considerably bigger, it has a lot more in it than some of the previous ones. Um, I managed to squeeze out more than what I've gotten in previous levels, uh, so this video will actually be a little bit longer than the uh, previous ones. Uh, I apologize for that, but there's a lot to cover with it. Um, but let's get right into it. Um, so as you can see, uh, once again, I kind of start with a fork in the road. Um, in this level, there aren't really any true dead ends. Um, they all go to significant areas. Um, I didn't have the extra resources to just uh, lead players to dead ends um, or do as much set design because I incorporated a lot more within this level, uh, gameplay wise. Um, and I also included a arena in it, um, so players that have been kind of playing through uh, and have already gone through three of the levels in the campaign, um, it's something for them to uh, really get a lot more out of it, um, one in difficulty and two in loot, uh, because once again the Fight the Dragons loot system, or the chests, uh, are all based off the enemies and uh, mini bosses that you kill. So the more that you kill, the better loot you'll get, and the more loot you'll also get. Um, so I really wanted to uh, incorporate a reward uh, on this level versus some of the other ones. Where granted, like the third level, uh, you got quite a bit of good loot from it, <coughs> but nowhere near as uh, the amount or quality that you will get on this level. Uh, anyways, so let's kind of dive in. Uh, the first direction that the player must take, um, making that the <coughs> other directions are locked automatically right off the start, uh, the player must go forward. Uh, just go straight ahead, which is typically uh, the direction players uh, instinctively go. So uh, I just kind of wanted to play off that, <coughs> making that the actual correct direction to go. Uh, once again, if they go the other directions, um, the gates are locked, and it's not like it's too far in before the player realizes that they're locked, um, so it directs them to this central crypt area. Uh, this central crypt is actually the main encounter for this level. Uh, by defeating it, uh, you get to proceed on, and you get the key that gets you effectively to the end of the level, um, or at that point you can go on to the arena. Um, something I incorporated in this uh, encounter that I had in, in previous encounters was these uh, crypts, these sarcophaguses that actually are enemy spawners. Um, the one that's kind of broken up here, or the whole one right here, are uh, just static. Um, they aren't actual spawners, but these that have like the cover off of them actually are uh, enemy spawners. So. Enemies will spawn out of these during the encounter, and part of the encounter is that you have to destroy those spawners. So it's something a little bit new, once again, uh, for the players. I'm just kind of building on what I've already been uh, incorporating, as well as reusing a lot of what I've already had in previous levels. Uh, but this is something new to the players that <coughs> they didn't see in some of my previous levels, so I wanted to add that as kind of a little uh, touch to the combat. Uh, and once uh, the player clears the room here. Uh, it opens up this gate, uh, allowing them to go down the uh, corridor. Something else that I did on this level was I added torches that turn on as players pass them. Uh, being a crypt, it's something that wouldn't necessarily be lit normally, um, and so I have it set so when the player passes the torch, it actually will turn it on. Um, and then I've got a few enemies back here just to try to lead the player back here. Um, and then there's the chest with the key in it. Uh, once you open the chest, this uh, NPC spawns in, uh, and he tells you about the arena that's in the level, and tries to kind of encourage you to 
go seek it out and uh, try its challenge. Uh, but he also does warn you that it is uh, quite difficult, so players that aren't too confident about their uh, skill level in the game uh, might want to just avoid it. And in that case, once they get the key, they can go through this door uh, and go on through to the end. Um, they, I did incorporate uh, another jumping puzzle in here with a bit of a chasm. Uh, and this one has like three routes that you can end up at. You, there's a secret area over here on the left side. Uh, at the top there is the treasure room, um, which the uh, NPC will actually be outside of, and if you don't want to actually take on the arena, he'll just uh, just give you the key, um, so you don't actually have to go and fight in the arena to get into the treasure room. But once again, with the loot system being based off how many enemies you kill, you won't get nearly as much or as good of stuff um, if you just go straight to the loot room uh, versus taking on the arena, or even a part of the arena. Uh, anyways, so, and then the actual critical path uh, is here to the right. Once the players get over here, they kind of loop around the treasure room. Uh, that way uh, they all, all the players that go through here will see the treasure room here. So if they've missed it, they can kind of double back and seek it out um, to make sure that they get it. Uh, anyways, if they just keep following around here, they get to the ladder, which will bring them all the way up here to the cave exit. Um, and when they exit the cave, it's morning, um, and I have some god rays to once again show that it's kind of peaceful, it's calm, uh, you've kind of conquered the level. Uh, and then this is where the fifth and final level will begin. Uh, but going back to the actual arena route, so once you talk to the NPC, uh, and only once you talk to the NPC, uh, he reappears over here by this gate, uh, and by talking to him at this gate, he actually opens it for you, uh, and then he'll disappear. And this allows you to get into the uh, large chasm area, where once again it's a much larger jumping puzzle than even the critical paths uh, jumping puzzle room. Uh, and this one kind of has a unique twist to it. Uh, one, there's a uh, health potion or uh, chests with uh, potions in them. Uh, up here, so it kind of can prepare players for the arena if they so choose this route. Um, but the kind of unique aspect about this jumping puzzle in this chasm is that it goes uh, around in a circle uh, clockwise, whereas if you try to go counterclockwise, uh, you'll hit kind of a dead end where you can't proceed that way. So right here, you can't get up to these higher pillars, uh, forcing the player to turn back. Um, so by trying to go immediately um, counterclockwise, uh, the player will be stopped pretty quickly. Um, but by going clockwise, they'll be able to proceed around. Um, if they try to go counterclockwise from the other side of the chasm, if they make it all the way to the arena area, um, they won't really hit much of a dead end until they get all the way back here. And it's right here, uh, where there's a low spot, and once again, there are high spots that you can't make the jump to. Um, so it's a little bit more punishing uh, if you do make it all the way to the other side. But the NPC also does warn you of this. Um, so he tells you to keep going forward and don't turn back. Um, and it's kind of that uh, whole mentality of... Um, the players are paying attention, uh, they'll kind of get a, a heads up on that, um, and if not, they'll kind of be punished for it a little bit. Um, it's not like it'll cost them their lives, they'll still be able to make it all the way back here and proceed, it's just they have to deal with the danger of the jumping puzzle a little bit longer. Uh, anyways, so once you get over to the other side of the chasm, uh, once again we have our NPC here, uh, he kind of gives you a little bit more info on the um, arena. Uh, lets you know that after each wave, the main gate will end up opening up, uh, allowing the player to leave uh, if they see it as too tough or that they just don't want to deal with it. 
<clears throat> or if they're running low on lives or potions, uh, whatever it may be, uh, it allows the player to leave uh, partway through without actually having to finish the entire arena fight. Uh, but once the player gets in here, uh, there's some more internal dialogue uh, kind of hinting at um, uh, kind of the player's story a little bit, um, building up the character and whatnot. Um, also hinting at some of the uh, increase in difficulties. So when you first walk into the room, there's just four beetles or four scarabs. And um, once you beat them, it's kind of like, oh, well, that's not so bad. Uh, but once they get... Once he gets through the first wave, uh, the player's character is actually like, "Whoa, okay, yeah, this is this is a little tougher." Um, and then after the second to last wave, um, he's like, "All right, it's, this is really getting serious now." Um, and then right before you activate the final wave, um, he's like, um, "I I don't know if I should." continue this this is going to be pretty tough it looks like this is going to be the final wave i better be prepared for this um to kind of warn players like that this is going to be the most difficult part of it um also after each wave not only do the rooms open up to allow the player to activate the next wave so it's not an automatic timer or anything um these walls actually do get broken down once a wave is completed uh, and then the player can come in and activate the trigger. But not only does it open up these uh, rooms, but it also opens up these health potion rooms. Um, so after each wave, the player can kind of uh, regenerate uh, some health and uh, rage potions, uh, heal off that a bit, and prepare for the next wave. Um, and then in the just before the final wave, instead of just getting three chests, there are two additional chests in the final uh, trigger room. Uh, so player is kind of, once again, a little bit more prepared for this final wave that's going to be a lot tougher. Um, during that final wave, there's actually, I want to say, nine mini-bosses and I want to say four skeletons by default, um, but six of those nine mini-bosses spawn more skeletons, um, so it is a considerably difficult battle. Um, also something to note about this encounter is that each time a wall is knocked down, um, so like uh, this room, when its walls are knocked down, uh, this lamp is actually, uh, when the player first enters the room, off, um, and then when the wall falls down, uh, the lantern is lit. That way it draws players' attentions uh, over to where the new uh, hole in the wall is, so that way they'll see the uh, trigger for the next wave. <coughs> so this room's pretty dark except for the four corners which those uh, candle holders are automatically on when the player enters the room. Um, all the rest are turned on throughout the course of the waves. <coughs> so as wave one comes in, uh, all the enemies that spawn around an area, uh, that area end up, ends up getting lit up. Um, as well as one of these four in the center each time uh, to kind of mark what wave it is um, and where the last enemies came from. So as this encounter progresses, the room gets brighter and brighter, um, preparing the player once again for that final encounter when all the lights are on um, and you know it's really serious and uh, it's fairly difficult. Um, now, being a max level player, I can get through it pretty easily. Um, part of that's due to some of my equipment and stuff, um, but some lower level players or uh, someone that's not as prepared with gear um, will struggle uh, quite a bit more. Um, but once again, uh, by having all of these enemies and all of these mini bosses, uh, once you complete the encounter and go to that treasure room uh, after the encounter, uh, <laughs> you get so much loot from it. Um, pretty much, uh, I've got max inventory for my character, and I cannot carry all of the items that it drops. Um, I'll come in this room, and I'll pick up about half the items that will come out of these chests, um, and I pretty much have to pick and choose between the best, um, and just kind of leave behind the, uh, less valuable or the things that I don't need as much, um, and then just the gold, uh, that 
these chests pour out. Like, it is absolutely ridiculous. But it's that, um, the whole risk versus reward mentality with that encounter room being so difficult <coughs> for most players. Um, it's that it's that risk that the player may end up dying and having to reset the level, um, where they can always skip it and or leave it and come back to it at a later time when they're stronger. Uh, but if they do get through it, they get a lot for it. Um, a lot of other uh, map editor uh, or map designers on this game um, usually put a lot of loot rooms and whatnot in it, um, but. I haven't seen one that has yielded quite as much. Um, usually certain maps will be taken down if they're just loot maps, um, but the ones that have difficulty where it's that risk versus reward um, are usually um, reinforced and actually supported a lot more by the community. Um, but that's pretty much it for this level. Um, once again, there's a ton more in this level than some of the previous ones. Um, but with it being the fourth level in the campaign, I really wanted to um, add something that was a little bit more difficult, um, but also a little bit more rewarding. Uh, I feel like it really accomplished that. Granted, uh, I had to sacrifice some set design for it, um, but being a cave, I wasn't too concerned about it, uh, simply because typically caves are very dull and kind of repetitive. Um, however, I was able to break up a lot of that with some of the um, different stone types and then uh, doing set design and some effects for some of the main rooms that you travel between. <coughs> um, so I feel like I was able to do uh, a significant balance between the two um, and I'm really uh, excited to launch this map um, when the final level is done and the campaign can be all tied together. Um, that is something that in the Fight the Dragon editor, um, you can't release individual maps until you have the entire campaign. Um, all the campaign levels have to be released together. Um, they can be edited after the fact, but you do have to have the entire campaign laid out uh, start to finish before you can launch it. So really looking forward to finishing up the last level and getting that uh, campaign out. Uh, once again, thank you for watching the video. Um, sorry it went so long. Uh, like I said, there's a lot to cover. Um, but I hope that you watch the next one and that you stay tuned. Um, once the level is completed, um, I hope you actually uh, download the campaign uh, if you have Fight the Dragon and try it out for yourself. Uh, give me some feedback. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, and once again, just thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.